Could it really be more Anthem news already? You better believe it. So we're going to be going over a ton of stuff, including changes to the Interceptor Javelin, some reactions about the shop prices for skins and stuff like that. That was recently revealed. The microtransactions have been unveiled finally. You can find that video I did about the shop prices in the description below. And then also some corrections from Bioware about some features that were recently mentioned in live streams and then a bunch of other stuff as well. So yeah, let's dive straight in. Hey everyone, what's up? Open World Games here, and let us begin. Also, by the way, really important, I'm starting up a brand new giveaway dedicated to, you guessed it, Anthem. If you want a chance to win a copy of Anthem for either PS4, Xbox One, or PC, see that description below on how to enter. All I do ask is that you are a subscriber to the channel. Be sure to turn on the bell notification icon if you want to stay up to date on all things Anthem. And you know what? Follow me on social media, by the way, to stay updated because I will keep you in the know, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or even my Discord. See that description. Plus, hey, Discord has a bunch of people you can match make with and find, you know, a squad. All right, so let's talk about corrections, first of all. So this was posted out by Ben Irving of Bioware saying, stream correction crafting information and he goes on to say the following uh in the latest live stream i made a couple of mistakes when it comes to crafting information he goes on to say legendary items cannot be crafted they can only be found in drops at launch crafted items get their power level based on your pilot level so they do scale in that sense but you need to unlock higher rarities of a blueprint to craft more rare items uncommon common rare and epic etc you can unlock the higher rarity options in a variety of ways, including challenges and earning reputation within certain factions. And then sigils are the new name for match consumables, not blueprints. So there are some really important noteworthy corrections from Bioware. So take note of those going forward. All right, so let's talk about some interceptor changes. So this was posted out on Reddit. It says this, and it comes from the death, of death or something like that. It says, Interceptor still has a few glaring flaws that prevent the full experience, including a primary aspect of the Javelin. And he has some very noteworthy stuff under there. This is the reply from Bioware uh, Camden, who says this, Hey, this is great feedback. A lot of these points are things we've also experienced internally have uh, have talked about so let me jump right into what we have done and should be in for launch or very shortly after he goes on to further say this increase aura stack amount uh three times the current amount or something like that he says reward wasn't high enough for the risk uh so it seems like there's a buff in that regard he says added ticking damage to aurora or excuse me not a ton but just enough to spice it up as well as give you better feedback about when it's ticking. Now, spark dash targeting for ground, air, and air ground, there were quite a few improvements we did since the demo to improve the overall usability of this one. Now, air to air melee attacks. Let's talk about this one. He says this. This allows the interceptor to more effectively and repeatedly hit enemies in the air, especially in ultimate mode. And then he goes on to say this, the air to ground melee spin does have a continuous hitbox, so you hit multiple times on the way down. The hitbox was slightly increased. So overall, it looks to me like the Interceptor has seen a buff here. So uh, that's actually good news for Interceptor fans, which I'm one. I felt like, you know, when it came to especially tougher enemies, the Interceptor really had to stand back and away from the battle. At least that's how I felt. I don't know about you guys. Plus, in my opinion, uh, some feedback here about the Interceptor. Personally, I think it would be cool to up the effects on some of their uh, abilities because you've got all these abilities going off, which look amazing from other Javelins. I would like to see that increase for the Interceptor. All right, also, he goes on to say this, things we may need to look at but may be fixed. Can't remember between all the builds at the moment. He says this, Tempest Strike, Air 2 Melee Animation, Matrix Mode, and then Spark Dash and Venom Spray targeting towards Reticle. Uh, rather than javelin facing pretty sure this was addressed but haven't seen it specifically myself in action so those are some other things that they're looking to in the future and then he says this things we haven't addressed or talked about yet changing primers and detonators we'll continue to watch this one because i definitely understand what you're saying but with the changes to aurora uh, we like to hold off on swapping up primary characteristics like this 
for Gear Intel. We need to now Wrath Strike, previously Shadow Claw, need to review and potentially rebalance this one as well. So, what is your opinion again about the Interceptor? I want you guys sounding off in the comments below. What would you what would get you to play more as the Interceptor Javelin in Anthem? That's gonna be my biggest question for you. So go for it. So yeah, as I mentioned beforehand, shop prices were revealed for Anthem, showing off, you know, basically the microtransaction system here. Uh, it's like ten dollars or something like that for uh, I think it's what a thousand shards or something. Uh, which converts to, I think it's going to be $8.50 roughly for an entire gear set. And the gear set, again, doesn't influence gameplay. So just to let you know, that is the info there. You can actually go, let's go over to uh, the prices so you can actually see them if you missed out on this. So you can see 850 shards, shards excuse me, uh, which translates, as you can see here, you can purchase them for $10.00. 1050 shards so there's the translation right there about eight dollars fifty cents again uh but let's go ahead and look at some of the reactions related to this right now so the community has been pretty vocal about this for sure so let's dive into this right now so first of all this one right here comes from excelin 99 who says so eight dollars fifty for an armor pack isn't that what everyone here was asking for ten dollars or less for a full armor set seems good to me people in the mtx thread are losing their minds right now thinking it's 20 dollars yeah so i think it's pretty reasonable but we're talking about epic gear only right now so we have yet to see what is going on with legendary type gear uh in the future but i'll keep you guys updated on that one now furthermore little grog says this i was hoping for five dollar armor set three dollars material two dollars emote we get eight dollar fifty armor set $3 material, $4 emote. So he was hoping that it would be a little bit cheaper. And I do get that considering that this is a $50 game. I mean, $60 game, excuse me. And it's not, you know, a free-to-play title. But it's not the, like, $20 to $30. I think, like, Fortnite, to get everything that you want for one character is, like, freaking $30. I think it's kind of outrageous. Over time, it just gets ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, moving onward, we have another reaction from 7 uh ether he says this can you buy exactly 850 dollars charge because if not it's like it's not i'm sorry eight dollars and fifty cents for an armor pack you're forced to buy the ten dollars worth to get an armor pack with not enough left over for anything else since everything seems to be uh 300 plus so yeah i guess the idea is they want you to purchase multiple stuff and then have that leftover currency to get you know more items over the long term if you understand what i'm saying right there so that's how microtransactions work uh but let me know your opinion what do you think it's, is it good bad post away in the comments below also the biggest thing is what's going to happen with the grinding so we have yet to figure that one out but from initial reactions this is really good news x Grex says this i was watching a stream and the player got over 5,000 coins in four story missions granted he was with a full team and likely playing on hard difficulty, but overall, it doesn't seem like an unreasonable rate. And that's something I keep hearing over and over again. It's making me uh, thrilled that it seems like this uh, game, hopefully across my fingers, is launching uh, very well so far. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to pay attention to the grindiness in the long term, by the way, because things can change. All right, so coin problems. Let's talk about that. So Steve Barker says this, me and some friends have grouped up after tutorial but we have a different amount of starting coin. Is that uh, meant to happen? One of us has 40K, the second has 80K, and then the third has 120K. We each play the game through Origin Premiere. And uh, the response was from Michael Gamble of Bioware. He says, yep, we're all, all over that one. So yeah, they're aware of that issue and they are going to look to fix it. I'm curious to see how they're gonna fix that one though. Uh, also, Myth says this, somehow I managed to unlock all four javelins at level two, thought it was normal until my friends told me they only had one javelin, and the response was, yep, that's a bug, we're on it. So again, I don't know if they're going to take away javelins or something like that, for those of you that aren't at a certain level, or how they're going to actually address that, but we'll see, and I'll keep you updated. Also, I noticed audio problems in my full build here. Uh, this is an update. It says, just a quick heads up to all you freelancers. We have improved audio performance and fixed a lot of bugs since the demo. Unfortunately, there are still instances of total audio dropout occurring, which will require a restart. We have a significant fix for this issue that will be deployed in day one patch. We are also working closely with Frostbite Audio 
to address any possible remaining causes. The issue seems to occur most often in heavy four-player firefights in certain conditions, but it's very difficult to trap and therefore reproduce to solve. And he said, we appreciate the patience, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, yeah, I had my audio drop out. I was like, dang it, I thought this was fixed. Come on now. So that will be in apparently the February 22nd patch. And also, if you didn't know, there was also a patch already applied to this version, the early access version of uh, Anthem. All right, so let's also talk about this one right here. Boone says this, will the 10-hour trial progress carry over to the main game launch? A lot of people have not been asking this. It is insane, so I'm going to answer it here for you guys. Jonathan Warner is going to answer, I mean. He says, yes. So uh, it has been, uh, so yeah, your progress will carry over from the 10-hour trial. No worries there. Uh, now, also, there's some noteworthy bugs here to talk about for Xbox One users. Michael Gamble says this, Xbox people, this is important. There's a known bug where if you uh, suspend your game on Xbox and come back later on and resume it, it won't reconnect. When you're done, kill the title and relaunch when you play next. Otherwise, it sits on the reconnecting screen forever. So just remember that one, Xbox users. Uh, Next up, this one comes from Darren Modian, who says this, getting settings reset every time I close the game and come back as well. And the response was this, Michael Gamble says, fixed on the 22nd. So that's another fix. Also, can you change a vinyl color? This, was one, uh, this is what uh, Paul was wondering. And no, you cannot, uh, says Ben Irving. So yeah, if you did not know, uh, the vinyl colors are going to be set in stone. I don't know if they should really have it where you could change the color or not. It would be pretty cool, but it would also kind of, I don't know, rob them of their uniqueness. I don't know if you guys agree with me, but let me know. Because they are kind of like art pieces. Also, what about this one right here? Meek says this, hey, love the game, but when do I get a non-dirty javelin? And the response was, you've got to do some challenges and unlock. I guess it is also associated perhaps with factions as well. Now, this is good news right here. Uh, Michael Gambo, Gamble reports on this. Uh, he retweeted this. Uh, this was from Cytry, who says this. Gotta say the Anthem is way better now than the demo on Xbox One X. It runs smoothly and the graphics are spot on. And he says the demo was an older build. So, I've also noticed graphical enhancements as well uh, when I am playing. Uh, so, that's good to know. I've got to fine-tune some things with my jitters because my PC, but uh, I, I do video editing and stuff like that. So you may have seen some jitters in some of this video footage. That's because I've gone straight from video editing to playing the game, and I accidentally had some stuff open in the background, which is not smart. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned here for more news and updates related to Anthem. The news seems to keep rolling in. Cannot wait to get into freaking March when we get to experience the Act 1 content, the new Stronghold and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be playing the hell out of this game tonight, tomorrow, pretty much indefinitely, I guess, until, uh, you know, Anthem 2. I hope that this game is that successful. I'm getting the hint that the launch is going pretty smoothly so far, so I'm pretty hyped over here. For sure, and I really do hope this is like a long lasting franchise. So, crossing my fingers. But guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>